So, Twitter has permanently banned Milo Yiannopoulos. I would have posted a video about this a few days ago, but I really thought that Twitter was going to cave after the backlash. Twitter is a business, one that's based on communication, so if Twitter starts blocking and upsetting the people who use it, that's just bad for business, especially when we're talking about someone like Milo, who's not just popular, he's someone whose popularity is increasing exponentially. Now, I have utter contempt for Twitter for blocking him, but oddly enough, I would have had even more contempt for Twitter if its leaders had backed down as soon as Milo's fans began posting free Milo. Being politically correct cowards is one thing. Being politically correct cowards who won't even stand up for their own cowardly decisions is even worse. So I'm impressed with Twitter for not immediately surrendering. Apparently, jellyfish have some kind of spines. Translucent gelatinous spines, but spines nonetheless. With the banning of Milo, Twitter is now to social media what DePaul University is to American colleges. At DePaul University, there are people who love Milo, there are people who hate Milo. But the administration decided that the people who hate Milo need to be protected from being near him. So he was banned from campus. Likewise, on Twitter, there are people who love Milo and there are people who hate Milo. But Twitter CEO Jack Dorsey stepped in and decided that the people who hate Milo need to be protected from being near his tweets. Twitter and DePaul are similar in another way, namely that in both cases, Milo showed the world their true colors. And this is what Milo is really good at. He tells people ahead of time, do you see that university over there? Did you know that that university treats students very differently based on their views? Did you know that certain students are favored because of their views and that other students are discriminated against because of their views? And people say, no, that's a university. They love diversity there. And Milo says, oh yeah? Watch this. Let me say something about modern feminism and social justice warriors. Milo speaks, students who hate him lose their minds, students who love him are overjoyed. Then officials step in and say, you students over here, we're giving you special treatment. You students over there, do the world a favor and staple your mouths shut. And the world is shocked. But notice, DePaul University didn't change. DePaul University was already like that. People's perception of DePaul University changed because someone exposed the bias that was already there. What's interesting about the Twitter ban is that Milo used the exact same method to expose one of the world's top social media sites. You see Twitter over there? Did you know that Twitter treats users differently based on their personal views? No, Twitter's just here to help people express their views, not censor their views. Oh yeah? Watch what happens when I make fun of the new Ghostbusters film. Lots of people have been sending Leslie Jones of SNL and Ghostbusters fame negative comments about the film and even some of the most horrifyingly racist tweets you can imagine. Leslie was understandably enraged. She complained about all the hostility and Milo poked at her and replied, if at first you don't succeed because your work is terrible, play the victim. They went back and forth. Some of Milo's fans started sending Leslie some of her past tweets about white people. Leslie retweeted a comment calling Milo the Uncle Tom of gays. Things escalated when people started photoshopping tweets from Leslie to make it look like she was making fun of gays, which enraged even more people. Leslie soon sent a message to Milo, you have been reported. I hope they lock your account. Milo replied, barely literate, America needs better schools. Leslie eventually blocked Milo, and Milo triumphantly tweeted, rejected by yet another black dude. Now, as far as I can tell, that was the most offensive tweet that Milo posted in Milo v. Leslie. He called her a dude. It's clearly a very mean thing to say, but is calling a female comedian who also likes to provoke people and who had no objection to calling Milo the Uncle Tom of gays is calling her a black dude, something that should get you banned from Twitter. I understand that there are users who deserve to be banned. The users who were calling Leslie a gorilla deserve to be banned. And before you say, well, she was talking about white people, let me say that there's a world of difference between jokingly complaining about white people and calling a black woman a gorilla. I would insta-ban someone for calling Leslie Jones a gorilla. If anything counts as abuse, that does. But calling her a black dude is in a different category. It's kind of in the same category as calling Milo the Uncle Tom of gay people. Should those kinds of mean tweets get users banned? That's actually up to Twitter. Twitter's administrators can make whatever rules they want. 
Your First Amendment right to free speech protects you from the government controlling your speech. A company like Twitter has its own rules. But there are some problems here. People on Twitter say things that are a lot more offensive than what Milo said to Leslie Jones, and they don't get banned for it. Just watch a few episodes of Celebrities Read Mean Tweets, much more offensive than what Milo said, and the celebrities laugh them off. No one gets banned. There are ISIS supporters all over Twitter. What are ISIS supporters doing on a site that won't let people make fun of a comedian? So it seems that if Milo is saying something less offensive than what many other people are saying on Twitter, and he gets banned for it while they don't, there must be some additional motive behind the ban on Milo. What's the additional factor? Milo's fans believe that it's his political stance, and there doesn't appear to be an alternative explanation. Why is this important? Well, lots of people on Twitter share Milo's views on various issues. Even if they don't agree with his political views or his moral views, they like the fact that he's on the front lines against a literally deadly form of political correctness that's running wild in the West. I say literally deadly because people are literally dying from this kind of political correctness. It's the kind of political correctness that keeps people from pointing out suspicious activity when they think someone's planning a terrorist attack because they're so terrified of being called Islamophobes, they would rather let the attack proceed than be called names. Many people who don't agree with Milo on moral or political issues nevertheless understand that he's doing possibly more than anyone else on the planet to confront what we might call toxic political correctness. And now everyone who agrees with Milo or appreciates him for some reason understands that they're not welcome on Twitter. Twitter feels different to them now, just as DePaul University feels different when we realize that certain political views aren't welcome on campus. Twitter just became a little less comfortable. But it gets worse. Those of us who criticize popular positions now have to wonder when we're going to get banned. I criticize Islam. Every day. If calling Leslie Jones a man falls into the abuse category, how long before criticizing Muhammad or the Quran qualifies as abuse because it hurts people's feelings? So Twitter just isn't as fun anymore, and users who vigorously defend views that run contrary to the views of CEO Jack Dorsey have to wonder how long we'll be on Twitter. This doesn't mean that Twitter will disappear anytime soon, but it does mean that as new social media websites spring up, users who no longer trust Twitter will be looking for an alternative. And as users migrate to these other sites over time, so will the celebrities, and Twitter will eventually go the way of MySpace. That's what happens when trust is broken. That's what happens when CEOs try to force people into a political box. And that's why Milo Yiannopoulos, regardless of whether you like him or not, has destroyed Twitter.